Hi, this is Charlie from Path of the Bee. Today we're going to continue part two of building a bee loader series. So today I'm going to start building a box. I've gathered up some uh, some sheet metal pieces and cut them and I'm going to just TIG weld them together and build the bottom part of the box. Uh, I'm going to get started. Okay, so I've set a couple pieces up here with my magnet, keep it 90 degrees. I'm just going to tack all the corners together for this box and then I'm going to finish welding it. Okay, so I have my little box tacked together now and uh, I'll go ahead and just weld all the seams on it and we'll get it, get it put together. Okay, so I've got my little box uh, welded up now. I'm going to make a little lid and I'll bend it up on the box and pan break. Okay, so I've uh, decided to make the lid out of uh, galvanized sheet metal. Um, my box is five inches square, and so I cut this piece of sheet metal seven and an eighth. That'll give me an eight inch or a one inch lip all the way around, and a little bit of slack in there. I'll go ahead and do the layout and show you how I do that. First thing is I want to make a one inch mark all the way around it. I built a fancy little jig here. It's a folded over piece of metal with a hole drilled in it exactly one inch. I can hold that on there, put my scribe in it, and pull it along the edge and scribe my mark of where I'm going to want to bend this at. I'll go all the way around with that and then I'll uh, mark out where I'm going to leave the tabs at. I'll show that part next. Okay, so I've got it zoomed in here. Hopefully you could see my scribe marks making this little box here in the corner. What I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to decide I'm going to cut this here and then that little square will fold this way it will be the tab that I'll spot weld to the, this piece as it's folded up. So I, I, I need a little bit of, of room here relief and then a little bit taken off up here so as that that tab isn't sticking up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about an eighth of an inch out of each segment here. Now this inside corner here I'm going to have to cut with a tin snip by hand. This outside I'll go ahead and use some mechanical uh, machinery to get it off. But I'll make these tabs. I'll make one here, one on the opposite side exactly the same um, so as that all the tabs fold towards the center. I'll zoom out a little bit and you can see that better. So when I fold this, I'm going to fold both these tabs up. So if I had this tab laid out that way, it won't work. Everything's got to match up because the machine that folds it will fold it up um, all in one line. So I'll get these cut out and I'll show you how the box and pan break works. Okay, so I got my piece cut out. I'll show you here kind of closer what I did. I, I cut those little angles out. So when these tabs fold up, they'll all be on the same page. Um, now what I'm going to have to do is use a box and pan break here. The first thing I'll have to do is get it adjusted uh, to make my bends. So what I'll do is, is that I can slide these pieces around and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll adjust it to where when I go come in and do the box, I have, I have one edge fitting here and one edge fitting here. It might be a gap in the middle, but that will help hold solid pressure on this piece and fold it on this piece here and fold it steady. So I'll get it adjusted and then we'll bend this up. Okay, so I've got the, the, the brake adjusted up here, and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this up, fold the tabs up first. So I'm going to line up the leading edge here of, of the clamps on my line, and I can push this clamp down here, and it'll hold it, and then when I lift up on this lever, it will bend it, and so I want to go just past 90 degrees so it springs back to 90. That looks about 90 to me. 
and then I'll release it and then I'll come over here and we'll do the opposite side. Now this fits in here, and I could come in here and clamp it down with the, with the benders. And I'll start to begin this bend. Now, if you'll notice, it's starting to run in here. And so what I'll do is I'll get a punch, and I'll set these each side in just slightly. Okay, so here I am. i got a punch right down here in this corner. Okay, and I've got that corner tipped in, tapped in. That one looks good. And now I can bend this up. And we're starting to form our box. I'll do this side. Okay, now we've got a neat little lid. I'll, uh, I'll work out these uh, with a little bit of hammer and dolly work, get them tight, and then I'll take it to a spot welder and give them a, give them a zap. Okay, so I've got my box here complete and my lid. Got spot welded, hammered the sharps out of the corners, and uh, it fits, if it's nice and tight, tight enough that when I put it on there, I have to use a hammer to get it back off. So I was going to try and figure out how to come up with some sort of an attaching mechanism to keep it on there, but it's just a good friction fit. I'm happy with it. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'll figure out how to get a hole in the side of it and put, get a grommet in there to protect our cables. Okay, so I've contemplated a little bit. I've uh, I found an old piece of radiator hose here that I'm going to use as the grommet. For, the, for these cables that go through the box. Um, I measured it up. I'm going to need about an inch and a half hole. And uh, I'm going to put it in the bottom uh, of our box here, come up through the bottom. So I'll grab the plasma torch and, and zip a hole in that real quick. Okay, so I've got my hole cut in the box here. And then I've, I've got it set up to, to fasten down. I'm just going to go ahead and fire up the wire feed and tack that box right where it belongs. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, I've set this control module in here where I want it. I used the scribe to mark around where the holes need to be drilled to mount it in the box. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And Okay, so the mounting screws that they included for this, uh, this control module are considerably longer than I need. I only need about a half of an inch. Well, they're a fine thread and they have a lock nut, so that means that I would have to wrench that on there the whole distance. I don't feel like it, then it's still going to be sticking out. So I'm going to postpone doing anything further here until tomorrow when I get uh, more appropriate fasteners. I'm going to go ahead and look at what I'm going to do with attaching the, the stick to the main boom. I do know that I have to remove this, so I'm going to get a little cutter wheel and chisel away at that and get it off of there. Okay, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to build the hinge system first. That way, I can figure out how long this stick needs to be. So, I'm going to build the, the ears on the end of the tube, and I'll have a, the, there'll be ears in this and a pin system, and I'll probably tack all this stuff together on a little uh, fish plate type system that this will like slip into, and then I, 
can weld it in and put another fish plate on the outside of it. But that way, once I have this hinge system made, I can then determine how long I, I really need to, to make my stick versus the hinge, um, those sorts of things. If I can shorten it up, I think that would be in my best interest because of just the, the longer this is, the more rotational force it will have on this system here. I'm leaving these flat spots here on to help me maintain direction and orientation. And I got some bolt holes and stuff in there. I think that might come in handy to attach it to my swivel. And same with the same with the ones on the back end there. I'm leaving these on. And maybe I just bolt my box straight to it for the battery. So those are my thoughts right now. That's kind of it for today. I'm going to see if I can round up the machine bolts or machine screws that I need to mount that electrical system in that box and start uh, contemplating exactly how I'm going to put that hinge together. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, little segment. If you have questions or comments, they're greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.